In this video I'm going to show you how to make the graph on the left, which is kind of the default graph as you drop it from the palette, and make it look more like the graph on the right, which is the one I, you can see in the Windows application demo. So I'll come in here, I'll change back to edit mode so we can see what we're doing. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this bounding box. So to do that I'm going to hold shift and right click to bring up the tools palette. I'm going to select the recolor tool. I'm going to right click on the background of the waveform graph and then I'll come up to this T in the top corner that basically just says make this transparent. I don't really want the, uh, the box around my graph. I'm going to do the same, I'm just going to left click on the title up here and get rid of, of that box too. Turn back on my auto tool because that's how I prefer to program and you'll see I can just move this down inside the bounding box like so. Now to customize the actual colors in the graph, I can do it with the coloring tool, but the easier way is to, to right click on the graph and come down to properties. And We'll get the properties dialog a second to pop up, and this will allow us to edit most of the other colors that we want to be able to do so. Uh, I'll turn on the graph palette for the future. We're going to want to add that too as a convenience for our user. Display format, I'm not going to change anything with right now. <coughs> And if we come to plots, this is where I change the colors. So for my sign with uniform noise, that's the actual signal. I, I want that to be, let's just take this blue color. The highlight uh, doesn't really matter what color I pick. I'm going to make the line a little thicker to make it easier to see. That's uh, that thickness. Okay. You'll also notice because I'm using the limit VI, I get these th other signals. So for failures, this is what's going to highlight the uh, the points at which I was above or below my limit. So I actually want to put a box around those. If I make those a little bigger, it'll make it easy to see. Let's just choose that box. You'll see it's red by default, which I'm quite happy with. The upper limit is the green line in the original graph. I actually just want a, let's just say a red line, and then I want to fill it with kind of a, a lightish red there. And I'll do the same with the lower limit. Again, Labby's going to remember the the colors I've used. Uh, I also want to fill my lower limit to negative infinity and my upper limit to upper infinity. So it's going to make it really obvious when my signal passes into one of these uh, failure zones. And again, any customizations we're making to lab user interface should help whoever's using it uh, perform their job easier. And in this case, if the job is identifying those failures, um, we want to make that fairly obvious. I'll come over to the scales. Um, Minor grid in this case is not terribly important, so I'm going to just hit transparent there. I don't want to see those. Major grid, since I'm going to make the background color white, let's do a very light gray, which will give us that faint uh, background. I'll do the same for the y axis. Minor grid again, I don't want those. And the major grid, I want this light gray. And then, I'm quite happy with those settings. I'll hit OK, and then to change that background color, again, I'll use the coloring tool, just select that. I can either make it transparent, in which case anything below or behind will show through. I don't actually want anything behind to show through, so I'm going to use the, the, the control background user color here, which is defined as white. Um, and you'll see now we're pretty close to, it, to what I had in the example. A couple of other things, if I come over here to the, the graph plot legend and right click, I have an option to anti-alias the signal. That's just going to kind of smooth those lines out a little bit. You'll see how they're, they're a little smoother. Uh, sometimes you might not want that if, if a very precise representation is what you're looking for. Um, it'll kind of do it on a more pixel by pixel basis, but that makes it look a little pixelated. Uh, I, I prefer to smooth them out and then I zoom in if necessary. Giving your user the ability to zoom in, they're going to need these graph tools, and again using this common technique of just making the gray areas of the, the modern controls transparent. Um, I find it makes it look a little better, a little easier to understand. So that's how you create the waveform graph customizations that I used in the Windows application demo.